Hi everyone, it's Katrina. Sandy skeletons. In the summer of 2021, roughly 200 creepy skeletons were recently unearthed on a beach in Britain. The beach is the last place you would expect to make such a ghoulish archaeological discovery, and yet here we are. The sandy beach had been covering a cemetery that dates back 1,500 years. The bodies of the deceased likely belonged to a very early Christian community in the 6th century. They were buried in the graveyard of a chapel at White Sands Bay in Wales. The thing is that people 1,500 years ago didn't exactly have the same love for the beach that we do today, and they saw no problem with using the sand as an easy place to leave corpses. After all, it must have been a lot easier to dig graves in soft sand than in hard-packed dirt. This is the graveyard of St. Patrick's Chapel, named after the saint who allegedly set sail from that very shore in the year 432 to convert the island of Ireland to Christianity. Because of its importance, the chapel remained an integral piece of the community up until about the 16th century. It was around that time when people forgot all about the importance of the holy structure, allowed it to decay, and it turned into an uninteresting ruin. But nobody realized until recently that just under the surface of the sand dunes, beyond the bones of the chapel, very real bones were slowly rotting, waiting to be carried out to sea. Swedish Massacre Site 1,500 years ago, a group of marauders fought their way into a stone ring fortress on the small Oland Island, located just off the coast of Sweden. These marauders then beat every single man in the village to death with clubs. Although there was also quite a bit of stabbing that happened. Somewhere between 200 and 250 people were brutally massacred, including the women and children of the village. And in a truly despicable show of barbarism, the marauders left the victims to rot where they had fallen, not even bothering to put them in a pit or properly bury them. Unfortunately, we don't know the exact situation surrounding what happened at the coastal village of Sandyborg. The site didn't even attract attention until 2010, when archaeologists found a skeleton hiding underneath the doorway of a house. When they did more excavations, they found 26 more bodies. Each body showed signs of a brutally violent end, with marks from being beaten with clubs, slashed with swords, and impaled with knives. That was when graduate student Clara Alfstadter realized she was standing at the site of an actual massacre. All we know has been put together based on archaeological evidence. One man died after falling into an open fire, with the flames burning through his skin all the way into his bone. When archaeologists looked inside of his skull, they found it filled with sheep teeth. They think that was probably a way for whoever killed the man to shame him in death. A couple of ratty old sheep teeth in the brain. And finally, the massacre was so merciless that in one house alone, nine murder victims were discovered. We also know the attack was quite sudden, because archaeologists found the remains of uneaten meals. Half a herring, cooking pots still sitting in fires. Basically, it was a surprise massacre, with the invaders exacting some kind of horrible revenge in the middle of the night. Vampire with no teeth In a strange and horrifying case of irony, a toothless vampire skeleton was dug up in Bulgaria a few years ago. The skeleton was dated back 700 years and is currently being stored at the National Museum of History in Bulgaria. A vampire without any teeth is kind of like an octopus without any tentacles. It just doesn't make sense. But the truth is that this supposed vampire probably wasn't much of a bloodsucker, and so he wouldn't have needed his teeth anyway. He was discovered entombed inside the ruins of an ancient church in the town of Sozopol, located on the edge of the Black Sea. The skeleton showed evidence of being stabbed through the chest with an iron rod. This was classic vampire murder, a metal stake right through the heart. But his killers didn't stop there. They then either pulled out or smashed out his remaining teeth. Scholars say this was done to prevent the vampire from rising out of his grave and then feasting on the flesh of the living. According to National Geographic, it was a kind of preemptive strike against a potential wandering corpse. Temple of the Flayed God Archaeologists in Mexico made a shocking discovery that's going to make your skin crawl, no pun intended. They found a temple dedicated to Xipe Totec, the ancient flayed lord or flayed god, and it's exactly what you're thinking. Xipe Totec was the deity of peeled human flesh. 
The pre-Hispanic cultures of ancient Mexico paid tribute to this disgusting god by wearing the skin of human sacrifice victims. Basically, they were a bunch of buffalo bills, flaying the flesh from people they had just killed and then wearing it like a jacket. And it was all in the name of Xipe Totec. What's also interesting about this new temple is that very little exists anymore. So much has been destroyed by the Spanish that it's a wonder a vague, lower-level deity like this still has any places of worship left. Nonetheless, a ceramic effigy of Xipe Totec was discovered in remarkably good condition at the ruins of his temple in Puebla State. And although researchers haven't found them yet, they are pretty certain that somewhere underneath the ruins is a great big kill pit. I'm talking about a massive burial where all the sacrifice victims of the flayed god's worshippers were deposited and covered up. Peruvian Death Mask A very rare and very creepy Peruvian death mask was found off the coast of Florida. The mask is made of copper, bits of gold and silver and iridium. The last ingredient is fascinating because it's a material found in meteorites. The mask itself was found on Melbourne Beach. According to MIT professor Mike Torres, the artifact appears to be anywhere between 10,000 and 12,000 years old. It was smelted by an unknown South American civilization, perhaps the first people on the planet to practice metalworking. Whoever these people were, they had figured out a blast furnace, shaped metal, and then formed one of the most disturbing death masks you've ever seen. And they did it using a material from outer space. As for how the Peruvian death mask made it to Florida, that's a whole different story. Mike Torres says the mask was most likely pillaged from a Peruvian tomb by Spanish treasure thieves. Then it went overboard during some boating disaster and ended up floating back to shore. Missing Feet In Peru, 32 skeletons were discovered, most of which once belonged to children from the Moche and Lambayeque cultures. What makes these skeletons especially creepy is the fact that they were found missing their feet. Archaeologists say these poor people probably had their feet chopped off after they were dead, then repurposed the bones and turned them into jewelry. Researchers say this was a fairly common practice. Civilizations in South America hundreds of years ago often cut the feet off the dead, then turned the bones into lockets, which would be worn by their surviving family members. It was almost like taking a souvenir of a deceased loved one so that they would always be close to you. And while that may seem a little gross, it's not that much different from putting a loved one's ashes in an urn and putting it on your mantle. But the skeletons with the missing feet were only part of the discovery. Researchers also found 60 urns stuffed with the remains of alpacas, guinea pigs, and llamas. They even found spoons made of bone, which could have been used for special feasts honoring the dead. The Moche dominated much of Peru between the years 100 and 700. Then the Lambayeque dominated the same region between about 750 and 1375, prior to the Inca. But both cultures, although distinctly different, practiced very similar burial rituals, including the removal of feet. Transylvanian Skeletons When researchers took a look at a cemetery in Transylvania, where the people had been buried underground for the past 6,000 years, they discovered something very creepy and unusual. The deceased had been buried with urns stuffed over their skulls or pulled onto their feet like socks. Archaeologists believe it probably had something to do with offerings for the afterlife. The unusual burials were recently found during an excavation in Cluj-Napoca, the historical capital of the region. Archaeologists don't know for sure what the urns once contained, but believe they could have been filled with food and drink. The ancient people may have put food inside the urns, then put them over the heads of the dead people so that they would have something to eat when they reached the other side. It's likely they thought this would help keep the deceased strong as they journeyed into the next world. Another interesting aspect of the site is that it was used over a very long period of time. The first graves are from a Neolithic settlement, and then more graves from a period known as the New Stone Age. And then finally, Archaeologists found evidence of a much later Celtic settlement which was built over the bones of the old settlements 2,200 years ago. Cromwell's Prisoners In November 2013, archaeologists working with the University of Durham discovered two mass graves near the Durham Cathedral. At first, they simply thought the bodies were part of the local cemetery. They figured, hey, these guys were just buried a little beyond the boundaries of the rest of the burial site. However, it now appears they may have been wrong. 
These bodies may have actually belonged to the victims of one of the bloodiest battles in English history. I'm talking about the English Civil Wars of the 17th century. The bodies belong to men between the ages of 13 and 25. In the 17th century, those were prime fighting ages. Dating revealed them to be about 350 years old, which put them perfectly in line with the Battle of Dunbar in 1650. Plus, archaeologists were a little disturbed by the way in which they had been buried. They hadn't been carefully put in the ground and then covered, but dumped into a pit unceremoniously and then blanketed with dirt, almost like covering up a crime. It now looks like these were Scottish soldiers who had been taken prisoner by the English. It's possible they were fighting on behalf of the Scottish Covenanting Army, which supported Charles II's claim to the Scottish throne. But then Oliver Cromwell came along with his army, defeated the Scottish army in a battle that lasted no more than an hour, and resulted in the death of about 2,000 Scottish soldiers. Somewhere around 6,000 soldiers were captured, many of whom died from malnutrition and disease. These skeletons appear to have been some of those that died once the legion of prisoners reached Durham. Stabbed in the back The body of a young man who was murdered 900 years ago was discovered at a wildlife center in North Berwick, UK. It's a pretty unusual place to find an ancient murder mystery, one from either the 12th or 13th century. The body was found at the Scottish Seabird Center, which a very long time ago had been the site of a church and cemetery. And while that church is gone and the corpses in the cemetery are hidden under layers of sediment, this one unfortunate victim has been unearthed. Initial analysis has shown that he was fatally stabbed, with at least four knife wounds to the back, two in his left shoulder and two in his ribs. He was around the age of 20 and may have been a professional archer. He had wear on his shoulder, which he may have gotten from constantly drawing back on his bow. Sadly, researchers don't know any more about his death. They know he was obviously murdered in a brutal and violent fashion, but that's it. Finding a motive to a 900-year-old murder is basically impossible. It could have been revenge, could have been a fight, or he could have fooled around with someone's wife. There's just no way of knowing. The Blood Quran Locked away in a mosque in Baghdad is one of the creepiest artifacts in the world. It's not actually that old, but it is pretty horrific. The artifact in question is a Quran, the Islamic holy book, written in beautiful Arabic calligraphy. The problem is that the ink used to pen this particular Quran wasn't ink at all, but the blood of the dead Iraqi dictator Saddam Hussein. From what we know about Saddam's life, his devotion to Islam came after the failed assassination attempt on his son, Uday. In a display of piety, Saddam drained 27 liters of his own blood, gave it to a calligrapher, and had them use his own life essence to handwrite a Quran. It took two years, with 600 pages being filled with the Iraqi president's blood. After his death, the authorities didn't really know what to do with the document. They didn't want to display it because it could be misinterpreted as glorifying Saddam Hussein and his party. On the other hand, it is obviously an artifact of immense importance. It may not seem like much today, but it will be a real historical relic in a few centuries. And so the authorities stuck it in a basement vault, locked it away, and now it's hiding behind three sealed doors. The only people who can open these doors are the city police commissioner, a sheik, and a mysterious third party who has never been identified. The Shabti Box A mysterious box was found in an ancient tomb. And who doesn't want to know what's in a mystery box? In the ancient Egyptian tomb of someone named Paramneku, researchers discovered the box with figures inside. Paramneku was a servant in the Place of Truth, sometime around 1279 BC. This box that researchers found is called a Shabti Box, and the figures are little people that will actually do work for you in the afterlife. There could be anywhere from 1 to 400 of these boxes in a single tomb during the New Kingdom period. The box almost looks like a miniature coffin, and these figurines would become full-fledged entities in the afterlife, your own little army of minions. They acted as substitutes for the deceased when they were called upon to do manual labor in the afterlife. If the gods wanted you to do something, anything at all, 
the deceased could use a spell from the Book of the Dead, and the Shabti figurines would do their work for them. In case you're interested in getting out of work and the beyond, it is spell number six from the Book of the Dead, which says more or less, if I am to be summoned to do any work which must be done in the realm of the dead, you shall act for me, whether it be in the fields, on the banks, in the sand. It was the ultimate last effort by Egyptians to be totally free of chores, even in the afterlife. Michelangelo's Secret Room In Florence, Italy, a secret room was discovered inside the Basilica di San Lorenzo. This was at one point the official church of the powerful Medici family, the family that controlled almost all the finances in Florence. They were seriously powerful bankers who were like the mafia back in the days of the Renaissance. They governed all of Florence and Tuscany with blood and murder if necessary, wielding power over the region for centuries. But this story isn't just about the Medici family, it's about the great artist Michelangelo. He had been hired by the family to complete all kinds of fantastic works of art. Most historians agree Michelangelo betrayed the Medici family in 1527 by joining a revolt that drove them out of Florence. He played such a major role in the revolt that historians believe he had to go into hiding after and wasn't seen again for months. In 1975, a museum director at the Medici chapels, a mausoleum designed by Michelangelo in 1520 inside the Basilica di San Lorenzo, discovered a trap door. The door led to a room which contained dozens of doodles and drawings all over the walls. It was immediately clear that these doodles were probably done by Michelangelo himself. This has never been confirmed, but most experts believe this was his secret drawing room. It's currently off limits to the public, with nobody except researchers with express permission allowed to even step foot inside. We don't know for sure if this was Michelangelo's private studio hidden down in the crypt, but it certainly looks like it. Kerm Sun Disk The Kerm Sun Disk became famous just a few years ago in 2014, after a young girl in Sweden brought it into school and showed it to her history teacher. It's a small disk with a diameter of almost two inches, it has a remarkable inscription about the Danish king Harold Bluetooth. The disc, which looks an awful lot like a coin, has all of the characteristics of being made by the Byzantines. The relic is definitely a confusing one. From what we know, it was probably found as part of a Viking hoard discovered way back in 1841. Deep in the cellar crypt of a ruined church in the village of Pomerania in Poland, an abandoned Viking treasure was uncovered. This church was in the same place where the Viking stronghold of Jomsburg had been around the year 960. The opening to the crypt was accidentally found by a couple of kids who were playing games at a construction site. After it was found, the locals had the good sense to leave it there for safekeeping. But during World War II, the treasure was discovered and stolen. It wasn't seen again until 2014. It turned out that the little girl's great-grandfather had somehow acquired it and kept the artifact in his possession. Archaeologists now believe the Kerm Sun Disk was created by a local priest sometime around the year 1050. It was likely to do with the death of Harold Bluetooth around the year 986. Harold died from his wounds, but nobody knows where he was buried. Legend has it he died at the old settlement of Jomsburg, but since they didn't have a Christian church, his body was probably placed in the closest grave where this mysterious disc was found. The suggestion here is that Harold Bluetooth's body may be in the area, hiding somewhere deep in the dirt. The Egypt Alien Rock A stone was found in the Egyptian desert, but it's no ordinary rock. Scientists say the Egyptian rock came from outer space, and that it formed during a supernova explosion that happened outside our solar system. The stone, which is named Hypatia, after the great female astronomer of ancient Egypt, was discovered in 1996. It was just sitting there in the Great Sand Sea in southwest Egypt. All these years later, a new scientific analysis seems to suggest the rock is the only sample of an alien material from beyond our solar system that got here through a supernova explosion. The research was done by a group of chemists at the University of Johannesburg. They now believe that a red giant got stuck inside of a dust cloud and collapsed into a white dwarf star. That star became part of a binary system, exploded much later, 
and gas atoms from that explosion became stuck in the same dust cloud. All these atoms eventually formed the rock Hypatia, and it was propelled through space 4.6 billion years ago. At some point, it landed in Egypt's desert. Mysterious Peruvian Mummy Archaeologists in Peru were recently left baffled after they uncovered the mysterious remains of a mummy that had been stuck inside a tomb for 1,200 years. The remains of this individual were unearthed at the archaeological site of Cajamarquilla, near the capital of Lima. Researchers with the National University of San Marcos could date the mummy, and yet they know almost nothing about the circumstances of its burial. This is because it was entombed in an extraordinarily bizarre fashion. The mummy had its hands placed over its face, with its limbs bound up in rope, like it had been subjected to some kind of torture. According to the lead excavator on the project, Peter van Dalen Luna, this was probably a funerary practice of a pre-Inca civilization. It's just that nobody had ever seen anything like it before. The whole mummy was wrapped in ropes, almost as if it had been caught in a fishing net. But it had obviously been done on purpose, leaving the experts scratching their heads as to why. What's your theory of why the mummy was wrapped in rope? Let me know in the comments below. The Wolf Suckled King In 2020, an ancient tomb was unveiled to the world. Months of investigation led to the showcase of a mysterious burial that researchers believe may belong to the founder of Rome, Romulus. The tomb was discovered in Rome over 100 years ago, but over the last 10 decades, experts could never agree on who exactly was buried here. It had to be someone important from a long time ago, since the stone sarcophagus dates back to the 6th century BC. It could be anyone, especially since historians could never decide on whether Romulus ever even existed. According to Roman legend, he founded the great city after murdering his twin brother Remus. Both of them had been raised by a she-wolf, but had a falling out when they couldn't agree on where to build what would become the center of the European world for hundreds of years. Finally, it looks like we may have some answers. According to the Colosseum Archaeological Park, all evidence points to yes. Ancient sources speak of Romulus's tomb being in this exact spot. Plus, it looks as though a body was never buried inside the sarcophagus, but almost like it had been more of a place of memorial. That would match with the story of Romulus's death. Legend has it that he was ripped limb from limb by jealous senators and had his body parts scattered across the city. So in reality, there wouldn't even have been a body to bury. Beer in China 4,000 years ago, evolutionary leaps in Chinese culture may very well have been made thanks to beer. New research has identified a major development that probably helped motivate drastic civilizational change. The researchers, scientists from the US and China, claim that when the Chinese learned how to mass-produce beer, it had a profound impact on their people. The Chinese brewed a red rice beer that was tasty and had mind-altering effects. It had been considered somewhat sacred before brewing technology advanced enough that everyone could drink it. The scientists revealed through their study that the sudden mass production of alcohol led to improved trading activity, as well as informational exchanges between the primitive peoples in the area. A sudden excitement over fermented alcohol permeated all Neolithic societies, causing them to trade with one another, exchange wisdom, and move more quickly into a socially complex kingdom of humans. Beer would have been one of the major ingredients for large gatherings, which would have resulted in larger social networks, and everything just kind of fell into place. It was the production of this delicious red rice beer that brought the people together, and later led to the first ruling dynasty in China, founded by Yu the Great in the year 2070 BC. At least this is what the study showed. Of course, there were probably more variables involved than just beer. It's just that the beer was probably a huge part of unifying the region. Ancient Greek Yearbook Archaeologists discovered a mysterious marble slab covered in Greek writing. The slab, or tablet, was made 2,000 years ago in ancient Greece. Researchers discovered it 130 years ago and then brought it to the National Museum in Scotland. It then sat in the museum's collection until recently, when someone actually looked at it for the first time in over a century. It's been so long that nobody even knows where exactly this thing came from, or really how it ended up in the collection. But here's where things get really exciting. 
Peter Liddell from the University of Manchester says this was no ordinary tablet, but actually a yearbook from a graduating class of students. It was made in Athens as a class book, which lists the names of each of the young men who finished their civic training that year. There are 31 names on there, only a subset of the full class that had probably contained at least 100 people. At the very end of the inscription is a translation that says, of Caesar. That's a reference to Emperor Claudius, who ruled the Roman Empire from the years 41 to 54 AD. Ancient Swiss Army Knife The Howie Sun's port blade is a very unusual ancient artifact, something researchers call the Stone Swiss Army Knife. It's an early example of a composite tool that boasted many uses. And while stone tools weren't necessarily revolutionary for the time, this particular artifact was made 65,000 years ago. It was so impressive that the ancient people took excellent care of it, even using glue and adhesive to fix the stone blades to special handles. But there isn't just one example of this Stone Age tool. They've been found at seven different sites across southern Africa. Each one is almost identical, showing that they were made using the same template. They could be used for all kinds of different hunting jobs, for cutting wood, harvesting plants, and working with everything from bone to feathers or skin. It's not the tool itself that's so mysterious. According to archaeologist Amy Way, she and the other researchers concluded that the similarities between the tools show information sharing. Human beings, some of the earliest people who ever lived, had a complex social network. This was how they all figured out how to make the same revolutionary tool across vast distances. The mystery is that we don't know how this social network functioned. Clearly, primitive humans interacted with each other from far away. But whether this was through envoys, nomadic wanderings, or more complex means, we just don't know. The Egyptian Stargate The temple to the solar god Ra at Abu Ghorab is a strange, mysterious place. Research and excavations were initially carried out here by German archaeologists between 1898 and 1901. It's next to the destroyed Pyramid of Nusair and less than a mile from the pyramid complex of Abu Sir. But it's the construction of this temple that has people so interested, because there seems to be evidence that the place was once used as some kind of stargate. The temple is made of stone walls with a grand obelisk that once stood 120 feet high on top of a squat pyramid. Most of all this stuff is destroyed, but archaeologists have easily recreated what it once would have looked like. On the eastern side of the temple was an altar, with the altar framed by four giant blocks, each one aimed at one of the four cardinal points. What's really interesting is that the altar once held a huge alabaster bowl that was used for an unknown purpose. From a mainstream perspective, this is simply a ruined temple thousands of years old. But there are some who believe that the Abu Ghorab Solar Temple is much older. Egyptologist Abdel Hakim Avian believes it was actually restored by the reigning pharaohs of the time, but was already old when they got here. He says that based on the geometric patterns, the unusual altars, and the age. This was probably a kind of stargate that harnessed energy from a massive crystal that would have been balanced inside the giant bowl on the altar. But of course, this is just a theory. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Queen Tiye Ancient Egyptian Queen Tiye was the wife of Amenhotep III and the grandmother of King Tutankhamun. She was famous in the ancient world for being uncharacteristically strong-willed. She was also famous for her amazing hair. In the words of Egyptologist Zahi Hawass, Queen Tiye had the best hair in ancient Egypt. She reportedly spent a lot of time meticulously caring for her luscious locks, which were still intact thousands of years after her burial. Viewers were shocked to see this in 2021 when her mummy was paraded through the streets on its way from Cairo to its new home at the National Museum of Civilization in Fustat. Even more surprising was the fact that her mummy bore no signs of gray or white hair despite the ruler having died at the age of 60. Queen Tiye shaved the front portion of her hair, which was a common symbol of power in ancient Egypt. It's believed that she dyed it with henna, which was also a popular practice at the time. When the queen died, the embalmers most likely gave her a fresh dye job. But how did she wash her hair? 
Before shampoo, ancient people had to use plants that contained natural saponins and mash it up in containers. To protect her hair from the arid climate, Queen Thie probably used a moisturizer, most likely castor or almond oil, which she would have massaged into her scalp regularly. This made hair easier to style. Ancient Egyptians, just like today, also believed in the power of scalp massages and hair oil to promote growth. Like many other ancient Egyptian women, Tie also owned several wigs and wore them often as a way to protect her natural hair from the sun and from lice. Hair extensions were also common and were typically either braided into a woman's hair or attached using beeswax and resins. But Queen Tia's biggest secret to having fantastic hair was animal fat from everything to crocodiles, hippos, goats, and lions. In some cases, ancient Egyptians boiled animal blood with the fat with the belief that it helped darken greys. It may sound like a repulsive idea in the modern age. Ancient Amputation Evidence of a brutal amputation has been found in a limestone cave in Indonesia. On the island of Borneo, researchers from Griffith University came across the bones of someone who had been the victim of prehistoric surgery. 31,000 years ago, some Stone Age doctor performed a precision limb amputation on an unfortunate individual. The researchers were shocked to find that the person's remains were missing the left foot and lower leg. But here's the really interesting part. After the scientists examined the remains more closely, they were able to confirm bony growths that had formed during the healing process. The victim of the prehistoric surgery had lived long enough that his wounds healed. And so, even though it's pretty terrifying to think about this person having their leg cut in half in the darkness of a cave, it's also kind of miraculous. The ancient people living in the Borneo cave would have boasted impressive medicinal knowledge. They would have needed to know about the tropical plants they could use as anesthetic and antiseptic. They also would have had ointments to help the wound heal. But most impressive of all is that they had the anatomical knowledge to successfully pull off a full limb amputation. The Tomb of the Priest the creepy tomb of a priest from 3,000 years ago has been discovered at an archaeological site in Peru. The site is called Paco Pampa, and the tomb is little more than a shallow pit covered over by a heavy stone. The burial dates back to around 1000 BC, with the priest being around 35 years old when he died. But this was no ordinary priest. He was buried with great care, given treasures to take with him in death, and sealed tightly to prevent grave robbers from getting to him. Researchers believe he may have wielded extraordinary religious power while he was alive. He at least had some level of influence to be buried with such treasures like pututo, wind instruments made from seashells. Unfortunately, it's not exactly clear which culture this priest belonged to because he died about 100 years before the rise of the Chavin culture. That being said, we can only guess that he and his followers had similar gods, like the staff deity or the fanged jaguar god. Polish Vampire At a cemetery in Poland, the skeletal remains of a female vampire have just been discovered by archaeologists this summer of 2022. Polish researchers came across the remains of a woman buried with a sickle tucked around her neck and a padlock around her foot. Her remains were found at an ancient gravesite in the village of Pien. Whoever buried her made sure that she would never rise from her grave ever again. If the sickle around the throat wasn't enough, the padlock around her foot would have surely kept her firmly in the ground. At least that's what the 17th century villagers thought. Magdalena Zagrodotska, a representative of the research team, said the woman was discovered wearing a silk headdress woven with gold thread. This has made for quite the mystery, because it shows that the woman was of a high social status. And yet the other artifacts found in her grave clearly show the locals thought she was a vampire. Unfortunately, the experts have no idea who this woman was. She has no identity. So at the moment, she's just a nameless vampire who died 400 years ago. The sickle around her throat was, in theory, supposed to cut her head off if she suddenly resurrected and tried to lift herself out of her grave. Ripley's Mammoth Nipple Ripley's Believe It or Not has come into the possession of a rather bizarre artifact. 
They now have on display two pieces of a preserved woolly mammoth that lived 49,000 years ago. The pieces of the mammoths were found in Siberia, uncovered in recent years as increased temperatures have caused glaciers to melt. The pieces of tissue were radiocarbon dated and confirmed as real and legitimate by the Kurt Engelhorn Center of Archaeometry. Ripley's now has a mammoth foot on display, as well as a huge piece of flesh with the mammoth's nipple on it. There is nothing overtly terrifying about a mammoth nipple, but it was a strange choice. If most museums could choose which part of the mammoth to keep, they would probably go for the skull and tusks. But Ripley's went in a totally different direction. Perhaps they were hoping to highlight the life of mother mammoths in nursery herds. Tens of thousands of years ago in the cold and unforgiving tundra of Asia, Europe and North America, mammoths roamed free. They used their huge tusks to dig through the snow and find buried shrubs and grasses. Mothers gave birth to a single calf at a time. They fed the baby until it developed teeth to feed like a grown-up. Mother mammoths also lived in large herds of about 15 individuals. These moms could live to be 75 years old, whereas male mammoths were typically forced out on their own and only lived to be around 40. Game of Bones In Israel, researchers recently uncovered an ancient game that was played using bones. The game is called Astragaloi, and it was a favorite of the Greeks 2300 years ago. Archaeologists have found examples of the game as far back as the Etruscans and other early civilizations. The gaming pieces are a little disturbing because they were fashioned from ankle or hawk bones, normally from goat or sheep. The game was all about seeing into the future. The person playing would have rolled five bone pieces. They could roll them all at once or one at a time. It all depended on what the individual thought would give them the best glimpse into the future. Each bone piece was carved with a Greek god or goddess. There was Aphrodite to represent love and beauty, Hera to represent marriage and family, and Nike to represent victory. We can only assume that depending on which god the person rolled, whatever that god represented would be incorporated into the player's future. If they rolled an Aphrodite, they would be in store for some love. If they rolled Hades, death would surely be coming for them. But not all the rules to the game are clear. Some of the pieces have bizarre inscriptions on them. One says robber and another says you are burnt. This almost feels like an Uno situation where perhaps another player is the robber and able to steal another's fortune for themselves. Would you want to play this game? Let me know in the comments below. Animal slaughter. The Tarteso civilization lived in the southwest of Spain before the Roman Empire ever existed. And while there is very little known about this ancient civilization other than they mysteriously collapsed, researchers have made some recent headway. At an ancient building where the Tartesos practiced animal slaughter, archaeologists have found human remains. This bizarre new discovery could reveal more about the culture of these ancient people. The Tartesos flourished 2,500 years ago. They lived in Spain from between the 9th and 5th centuries BC. They were sophisticated, had advanced technology, and were supposedly rich. They traded with the Phoenicians and the Greeks, and after 500 years, found themselves being invaded by Celtic tribes. This was likely what led to their downfall. The recently excavated building was burned down at the very end of their civilization. It was built with an advanced kind of cement, something even the Romans would have been envious of. The structure was some kind of sanctuary, and it contained the remains of 30 animal skeletons. Most of these skeletons were horses, and they appeared to have been sacrificed. They were locked inside the building as it was lit on fire and they all burned alive. But it's the human bones that have gotten archaeologists' attention. Someone was lying dead on the floor of the building and had been incinerated by the fire. The person was found near a door, and he had a spearhead lying beside him. The excavation team believed he was a watcher, standing guard so that nobody interrupted the sacrifice. But then, somehow, he himself got trapped inside and was burned alive with the horses. Human Teeth When archaeologists found human teeth with holes drilled into them at the site of Katalhuyuk in Turkey, they weren't entirely sure what the teeth had been used for. 
They were 8,500 years old, left behind by Neolithic hunter-gatherers. In 2015, researchers identified the holes in the teeth as drill holes, then conducted microscopic and radiographic analysis. This confirmed what they had been thinking. The teeth were used as beads or pendants for somebody's necklace or bracelet. We were able to confirm this morbid theory because the drill used to punch a hole through the teeth left the same marks found on beads and animal bones also used as jewelry. Scott Haddo from the University of Copenhagen also said the teeth showed similar signs of wear as the other ornaments that Neolithic people wore. There is no disputing that these teeth were strung on a piece of jewelry, likely fashioned around some ancient person's neck. The final grisly fact about these teeth is that they had been taken from a mature person after death. Based on the tooth surfaces, whoever's mouth they came from died somewhere between 30 and 50 years old. Somebody had taken the teeth out of a corpse's mouth, then went through a lot of effort to string them into a necklace. I don't know, would you want to wear your ancestors' teeth? Or is that too morbid? Let me know in the comments below. Disturbing Burial Pit Before England was the financial center of the world, it was a conglomeration of medieval towns and villages with primitive settlements scattered across the country. That was the way it was for over 10,000 years. Some of those medieval towns are still around today, like the deserted village near Malton. It's one of the best-preserved medieval villages in Britain, and also the most terrifying. Archaeologists have been excavating the place for over 60 years, trying to get a full understanding of what life was like in the Middle Ages. The mysterious village was occupied for at least 600 years. The first houses were built around the 9th century, and the whole place was abandoned near the beginning of the 16th century. Today, there isn't much left except the foundations of houses scattered across the grassy hills. In the 1960s, researchers unearthed the most ghastly part of the entire village. They found a burial pit containing over 100 human bones. At least 10 people were buried in it, according to researcher Dr. Rathmel. It was a disturbing find because this was a Christian town before it was abandoned in the 1520s. There was a church with a cemetery attached. Most people in the village should have been buried alongside their loved ones. So what's the deal with the burial pit? The truth is that nobody really knows. There is speculation that perhaps the bones could have been older, maybe from Roman times, but carbon dating showed them to be medieval. This small English village of God-fearing residents, for some unknown reason, massacred 10 people, broke their bones apart, and buried them in a hole that they thought would never be found. Creepy Egyptian Mummies A pair of photographs have been circling online that appear to show two very peculiar mummies. These mummified human remains, if they are human, look extraordinarily tiny. They look almost like baby mummies, except there is something wrong with their bodies. The very structure of their bodies doesn't exactly appear human. According to the source of the photographs, the mummies were originally discovered by Dr. Victor Lubeck, a retired professor from the University of Pennsylvania. He found the preserved Egyptian remains surrounded by unusual artifacts, things that you wouldn't typically expect to find in a tomb from ancient Egypt. The mummies were so creepy and the artifacts so bizarre that Egyptian authorities wanted to keep the whole thing a secret. Because, to be honest, the mummies look like tiny extraterrestrial beings. But the truth is that none of that is real at all. The photographs of the alleged alien mummies are in fact a pair of mummified baby girls found in the tomb of King Tutankhamun in 1922. The reason they look so much like aliens is because they were hardly more than fetuses when they were mummified. Researchers call them Mummy 317A and 317B and believe they were probably the offspring of King Tutankhamun and his wife, Ankesanamun. The Amber Spider 99 million years ago, a spider was crawling up a tree with her baby spiders. It was just another day in the prehistoric world. But then, the arachnids got stuck in a patch of sticky tree resin, and they've been stuck in it ever since. The tree resin hardened and the spider and her babies were trapped just like the mosquito from Jurassic Park. At first glance, it looks kind of terrifying. There is a small eight-legged monster with huge fangs 
and its glob of tiny underlings frozen in a piece of amber. For arachnophobes, this is freaky. But for researchers, they say the solidified piece of amber showcases the maternal care that spiders have been giving their young ones for millions of years. That was when the first spiders appeared on the planet, during the Carboniferous period. The mother spider, stuck in amber, discovered in Myanmar, was from the Lagano Megopidae family, which is completely extinct. Spiders have been around for a very long time, and haven't really changed much since they first evolved. Thanks for watching! Which of these scary archaeological discoveries did you find the most fascinating? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already! See you soon! Bye!